My name is Chris Hart. I'm a counselor at Mountain Crest High School. And Natalie has asked to interview me um, and to share some of, of my story. She indicated it's a folklore class, so I'm going to share and she's going to ask me questions. I've decided to share about my childhood. Um, when I was a child, we were very, very poor. We lived in a, a town with only five houses, and it's a small ranch, and we didn't have any kind of uh, indoor plumbing, um, and so we, um, we would have, we had a double-seater outhouse, which would mean that I'd go in and my sister and I, we could sit on this double-seater outhouse seat, and it had slivers. <laughs> So you had to be careful when you sat down. And sometimes we couldn't afford toilet paper, so you just use some newspaper, magazine kind of stuff that came in the mail. And when you went to the outhouse, you always, before you sat down, you'd have to look down and make sure there weren't any skunks or badgers in there. You ever have any experiences like that, Natalie? Um, yeah. Um, I grew up in Mexico, so we didn't have any bathrooms, like, Mm -hmm. toilets so we usually just like went outside right. or had like this little curtain in a corner of a house or something really? and just a hole and yeah went yeah. there and stuff and you were a lot um, younger than I so that would have been in what in the early 19 I mean middle 19 1990s yeah you and see mine this was back in 19 late 1950s that we didn't have an outhouse and then my dad would milk cows. They had electric milkers, but we couldn't afford it, so he'd just milk by hand. And he'd just sit on a stool, a little one-peg stool, and he'd just sit there and milk away. Then he'd take the milk cans. We had a big cement uh, kind of vault thing that was filled with water. And he'd put the milk cans in the water and wait for the milk truck to come by and pick them up. Even though they already had, you know, milkers and stuff like that, we couldn't afford it. Um, then we'd have goats and we had chickens. I remember going into the chicken coop and how badly it smelled. Ugh, ugh. Did you have chickens when you were a kid? No, I did like a few years ago though. Did you? Yeah, and they stink. They stink. And then you go to get the egg and they have poop on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to take and clean the eggs off. And dad would kill the chickens, you know, and chop the head off or fling them, yeah. <laughs> and the chickens would still run around <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. without their heads on. Right? My dad did that once. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it, it, ran, a while. it yeah. ran for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we, because we were poor, we'd always uh, go hunting um, to get deer. And so I learned how to shoot a gun, and I got my first, I shot my first deer at 14. And every year we'd go, we'd shoot our deer, gut them out, hang them from the tree, skin them, and then we'd cut them up and store the meat and use that for the winter time. Makes me sound really old. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a fridge? Yeah, we had a fridge and freezer. Really? And electricity. They were old though, but we had, we had that. And even after my parents divorced and we moved into a bigger town, we'd still go and, and um, hunt deer. And um, sometimes, it sounds terrible, we lived in a, a town in Montpelier, Idaho, which is by Bear Lake. We'd have to kill a cow. <laughs> And so you're in town, you'd still, you'd shoot the cow, and then you'd hang it up <laughs> on a tree and get it out and everything. And I don't think the neighbors really liked that a lot yeah. because it's pretty gross. But it, you know, it taught me, um, it taught me how to save money, how to be good with my money, how to value going to college. I really wanted to go to college. And I knew I, I wouldn't, I barely graduated from high school. I knew I'd have to pay for school. So I just worked really hard, worked for the Forest Service. Um, for nine summers, I worked for the Forest Service and saved money so I could go to college every year. Um, but it taught me really, really good things about people and being kind and all that stuff. Kind of like you. You're a very kind person. And it's probably because your parents taught you to be that way, right? Yeah. Yeah? Me too. 
And when I, when we, um, we'd all have to sleep in the same room when I was a kid because we didn't have, we didn't have a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you guys all have to sleep? Had to sleep in the same room, or do you have your own room? No. Well, when we were growing up, we lived in a trailer. Yeah. So it was like only it was three rooms, but my uncle and his wife lived with us. Yeah. So they slept in one room. Me and my sister slept in another one, and my parents and my little brother slept in another one. Wow. And it was there was only one bathroom. And then like half in my uncle's room. Yeah. So it was like really tight. Mhm. Mm Living with. It was probably yeah. a single wide trailer, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But because of those things, I think doesn't it make doesn't it it helps you to appreciate things. Like, do you love your house now that you have? Do yeah. you have a room or stuff? Yeah. But that was in, was that in Mexico or here? No, here. Here they had. Yeah. It? How old were you when you were in Mexico? Nah, probably till like I was like three or four. Three or four. Yeah. So, so I grew up here. Yeah, your memories are, yeah. are kind of of Mexico, huh? So because of because of my childhood and it makes me appreciate being outside. I because of the outhouse, I don't have any problem just finding a <laughs> place outside. You know, not in town. <laughs> so like when we went on our backpacking, our tr camping trip that we went on, remember? Yeah. It was no problem to just go find a place to go to the bathroom, huh? No. And it was no problem. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was no problem laying the sleeping bag out, sleeping out under the stars, yeah. or finding a way to stay warm. Right? Yeah, I liked that we just like laid down the little tarp thing and like everybody pulled out their sleeping bags and just, just laid, laid it right there. <laughs> and we cooked outside and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, all of those kinds of experiences um, um, made made life better so that we appreciate what makes us stronger, huh? Yeah. And care about people. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fun like how we interacted with all the people who went on the trip and stuff. Yeah. And what we're talking about right now is that um, la two years ago, right? We went yeah. we took a trip down to southern Utah and we went on a bus and we just took our sleeping bags and we can't and we just camped wherever we could find a spot off the bus and we cooked out of, did we cook out of big old cans? Yeah, it was like, the, cans? yeah. They were can, and we made soup, and we made spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't good. And we just enjoyed being out in nature, which is kind of like what my childhood taught me, and I think it sounds like, you know, you did a little bit too. We just enjoyed being out there. Yeah. And feeling relaxed, and just being with people, and talking, and laughing a lot, and stuff like that. Seeing country that you'd never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, any other questions you have for me before we end this interview? Um. Um. One of the stories I had, um, as far as the folklore, when I was a little kid, um, my mom and dad went fishing, and they had this old car, and I was a little tiny baby, and I had an older brother, so they had him out by the stream fishing and they'd park the car in the, in, the, in the willows and I was asleep and there was a little baby. And there were a couple of guys that had escaped from jail and they were just running, you know, trying to run away and they'd found a gun and they came upon the car and they, and they said, give us the keys to the car, to my dad. Because, you, know, you know, and he knew they'd escaped from jail. And they said, give us the keys, give us the keys. And my dad said no and just resisted and resisted and started getting louder and louder to where um, you know, he made enough noise, started making them nervous. And he, Dad knew that I was in the car asleep in my little baby wrap thing. And he, and so he was scared. It wasn't so much he didn't want to take the car, it's like he didn't want him to kidnap me. And so he made more and more and more noise. And finally the guys just gave up on it and they took off. And the next day in the, in the local paper, um, my name's Chris, but in the local paper it said, you know, um, Mr. Hart warded off, he scared off these uh, fugitive people from taking his car, made all kinds of noise. Mr. Hart, you know, knew that his little child was in the car. And the whole time, little baby Charlie slept away and didn't wake up at all. Even though my name's Chris, and I'm not a Charlie. <laughs> anyway, that's the story. Think we're good? I think we're good. Okay. Thanks, Natalie, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, Chris, for doing it. <laughs> <laughs>